this live Q&A day, uh, and I have a special guest for you today. Anya from Restream will be joining us here in just a minute. You guys love her energy, so we wanted to bring her back to help out with today's Q&A. So little thing that I found out during the setup, we get kind of an exclusive like first discussion of a new Restream feature. Yes, I don't believe that it's been talked about very much or anywhere. So you guys will hear all about that. Um, and I did get a haircut. Yes. <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, so many, yes, super safe environment as CK is pointing out. Uh, and everybody loves this challenge. So do come back if you've already done it. And if you've never done it, come join the fun. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to see everybody. So many great comments. And I totally, yeah, the hair thing. That's the theme today. Now, um, if you guys, as you learn about Restream, or if you haven't already signed up for it, you can get a $10 credit right here at livestreampros.com slash Restream. Heads up, if you're a Streamer Accelerator member, we have a special discount for you guys. We'll give you that those details next week. So if you're a Streamer Accelerator member, you guys get a special discount that Anya set up for you. So very excited about that. Anya, you have a special announcement, a couple of new features that you wanted to show off real quick before we get down into the questions. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to just share my screen and just give a little bit of a... I guess, tour for those people who are new, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, for those people who are already familiar with Restream, there are certain things that changed in a couple of months, the past months, especially since we last did this in March, this uh, similar Q&A session. So just a little, I guess, refreshment about like what's going on here. Yeah. So one of the new things about Restream that happened recently is we changed our interface, your entry point, your first touch point with Restream now is this situation, which um, I guess we sometimes refer to as lobby. So basically you come in and you immediately get the opportunity to decide what are you going to do in Restream? Do you want to stream live as a studio and just enter the studio space and just instantly go live? Well, then that's your door. You can also stream a pre-recorded video file, upload it uh, from your computer or Google Drive or now even Descript. Or, uh, of course, just reschedule previous stream to go live again for alternative time zone or different audiences. Yeah. You can schedule events. Uh, so you get a postcard on social platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So folks know to set the reminder and show up when you are ready. And the brand new thing here is also our record only button. So basically, if you hey. want to use Restream <laughs> for your videos without ever going live, without adding any channels at all, you basically can start in a similar space as your studio. Your graphics are going to be here. Your captions are going to be here, but no distractions such as chat or channels. Just record it, then access your recording in the storage, download it for editing or put it, nice. set it live later, whatever you want to do with that. Um, and I guess now the very new feature. So the new feature uh, is is still in beta. That's why it's not currently available for all users. We're Wait, hold on. Before you go to the new feature, is every when when does everybody get that look? Yeah, so that's uh, that's a good... Uh, do you mean like the lobby look or yeah. the new... The uh, lobby. This, yeah, the lobby is currently only for new users. So people who have older accounts are currently still having like okay. the old version. The reason for that is a lot of people who are used to starting with adding channels and then from there entering studio and everything else are... Um, they express some concerns that this is a little confusing for them. So we're just going to like hmm. gracefully trying to change okay. that for people who've been, who have been with Restream for five years and now everything is blue and purple and there are fires coming up on upgrades. So like we're just going to like <laughs> trying to ease people in this situation before, okay. before it's like full blown for everyone. But it is going to change eventually. So I would say uh, give, it, give it another month and hopefully we'll all transition to this new, new look. Um, as for pairs, which is our new feature... And in short, it allows you to uh, stream or restream your live videos to the channels of your guests. That is something that we are working on right now. It's in beta for some people already, but, and it's going to come out in the next months, hopefully to all users uh, that we have. So this is how the event looks from the perspective, like when it's already built. And as you can see, you have your channels here and then you have guest channels. Nice. So what this means, yeah, that when you create an event, you can now send this kind of link, which says, 
you, you have like a little checkbox that says allow guests to stream this event to their channels. If you uncheck that, you get like the old good link where people just connect and show up as guests. But if you choose to allow them to stream event to their channels, then they uh, get an opportunity to create a restream account. It's free for them. Add channels, including paid channels, which is also free for them since they're your guests. And uh, then once once it's time to go live, you can go live to both your channels and the channels that guests added. So, for example, if we wanted to pair with you today, this stream could have gone on live streaming pro, pros social channels as well as on your social channels as yeah. well as maybe restream social channels if I chose to uh, to add those uh, and toss them into the equation as well. So it's pretty powerful because your guests become the advocates for your live stream. They help you yeah. amplify and like get more more views. And of course, it's super easy for co-marketing, co-branding campaigns when two brands are trying to work together and send the same content yes. to both pages. They just pair, no credential shared needed, no breaking into anyone's account. Uh, and like full visibility in terms of where exactly the stream goes. It really um, is a, a pain in the butt <laughs> to yeah, um, it is to, to get onto other people's you know onto your guests' streams. Um, you know you can send them the link to share themselves, but eh, sometimes yeah. they do, sometimes they don't, right? Um, yeah. And uh, so, and then you know Facebook has cross posting, but. That is also kind of a pain in the butt because you have to know about it, first of all, which most people don't. Yeah. Then you have to <laughs> change or you have to both approve on each other's channels. And then you have access to that channel for all time until somebody removes the other from that cross posting. But oh, wow. with yours, you just have access for that one stream, right? Exactly. So the beauty of pairs is that you're, it's event-based. So you pair only for that specific event and your guests yeah. can add channels and then everyone is happy to go live. And then once the event is over, of course, you still have the recording and you still have this history of the event from the past, but you do not have to worry about adding or deleting or kicking yeah. those people out of your list or those <laughs> channels taking any of your paid channel slots. Like None of that is only for that event. I love, I love that feature. You can go, it's not just Facebook, it's every channel, mm -hmm. right? Because the, all they do is log in and, and then they cha cha yep. choose to yep. approve that. So very, very cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And I'll be playing with it as well. Uh, but yeah, so, okay. Very cool stuff. I'm very excited about these new features. Um, not everybody has access to pairs yet, right? That's right. Yeah, that's so right. that'll be rolling out over time. So if you don't see it, then you'll know. <laughs> if you guys want to get uh, try, test out these new features from Restream, you can sign up here if you haven't already and get your $10 credit. Again, if you're a Streamer Accelerator member, uh, next week I've got a special discount for you guys. So CK says, I go live from my GoPro at times, but currently I'm unable to connect to Restream. Is this something you can ask GoPro about making available? Interesting. So um, I guess it kind of like depends on how you're connecting your camera. Are you going through a studio? Or are you using a different encoder? Uh, GoPro also depends on the version of GoPro that you have, because I believe there are like six of, of them right now or seven. I would say for something that very specific like that, just specific to your setup, I would recommend uh, reaching out to our customer support. We have 24-7 real humans in the chat. <laughs> Wait, you have humans? <laughs> yeah, they're real humans. Well, a lot of people think that this is just a bot that will create a ticket and like people like refer to those chats as tickets. And it's like, it's not a ticket. It's a real-time streaming engineer. <laughs> human technicians being there, like helping you out. So I would say um, it sounds like it, it could be pretty complicated setup for you. Uh, so just kind of like to understand uh, wh what it, uh, your GoPro connects to. Is it a studio space? Is it OBS? Is it a different encoder? Uh, but most of the time, GoPro should work just like like a web camera. Um, and uh, yeah, so we just need to look into, into your specific setup and what you're connecting it to. By the way, guys, don't you love our new graphics look that the magical Mr. Paul Dixon created? I mean, I think it looks fantastic. I love the new like bright look. Yeah. So yeah, cool. It's super bright. Um, yeah. Blind Grilling says, what plan is required to not have the watermark? All right. So if you want to not have the watermark in your Restream Studio, you will need a pro plan or anything above it, of course, professional, uh, the professional plan or premium or your um, business plan or, of course, enterprise plans that hopefully no one here 
typically has. It's more right. like a big company. <laughs> so yeah, ProPlan will remove all restream branding from all of your channels. That will include watermarks as well as uh, any kind of links such as Powered by Restream or Multistreaming with Restream uh, under your description. My my so the magical Mr. Paul Dixon mentioned that there's a new animated so he comes into Restream and sets all the graphics up and stuff. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what's here? Um he yeah. said there was a new animated background. Is this new or has that been uh, around for a while? Oh look at this. Oh my god, you guys made a custom one. It's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love that. I have not seen such a slick and clean and amazing like logo writing. Yeah, that's relatively new. I believe we released that in April, May. So it was a spring thing. And okay. we have a, a couple of just standard ones that we created. Um, that And of course, you can upload any video file uh, for to, to make your custom one. Uh, just going to make sure that you loop it. And then you get something like this. This is beautiful. How cool yeah, is so that? that's yeah, that's uh, the standard animated backgrounds are free, of course. And if you want to custom uh, to customize them like you guys did, that's a pro feature as well because anything custom is going to be pro. Awesome. Okay. I, I love the, I the pro account, you guys. Like if you're signing up, the pro account gives you so much. Um, and one of my favorite things, Sammy asked this earlier, what's your favorite part of Restream? I got to say the thing, I mean, I love how easy it is, right? Like that's it's super simple. My favorite feature, honestly, is like the analytics. Like it's one of my favorite things because nobody else has that, right? When I stream anywhere else, like I don't get analytics and you guys get pretty detailed analytics and they're much better than Facebook, right? Analytics, like it's just come on Facebook, you need help. But um, <laughs> yeah, so like that's one of my favorite features is the analytics in Restream. That makes sense. It's really good. And it's can also constantly evolving. We're, like we're experimenting with a lot of things there and like adding new new different like tracking metrics. But yeah, it definitely helps to see how you do in terms of viewers. What's your peak? My favorite part of analytics is your peak time, right? Across all platforms. Like you know exactly at what moment of your stream people were the most engaged. And you're like, oh, okay. So let me just go back and see whatever I did at that moment and just continue replicating that in order to to scale my viewership and keep my audience engaged. So that's yeah, a good one. Absolutely. Um, okay, real quick, celebration in order. Celebration for Sherry, who just signed up for Restream. <laughs> What's Amazing. the best way to get a scheduled walkthrough, setting it up in a demo? Do you offer that? Or should we just point to some of the tutorials that we've done here on this channel? Yeah. So if you are on pro plan or higher, we do actually have a brand new customer success team. And those folks are offering different kinds of webinars. There's one too many when there's a webinar, when uh, the customer success team selects a group of people and it's kind of like a group settings of training webinar walkthrough uh, type situation. And we do also offer one-on-one -on -one, um, consultations with our customer success team for something like that. Um, I believe now if you schedule an event in Restream Studio, we actually automatically send you an invitation to, to chat with our customer success expert. If not, you can always reach out to our support team and say, hey, I'm looking for customer customer success folks, and I would love to have a little bit of help with walkthrough, and then they will connect you with the right people. That's uh, currently a paid feature since, you know, folks need to dedicate some time to help you out, and uh, pro and premium and business plans are going to have access to that. So if you are on pro plan, you should be getting something already. If you haven't got that yet, just ping our support, and they'll connect you with the right people. Awesome. Love that. Um, question. You, could, you guys do 1080. I've done 1080 on Restream before, right? Uh, yeah, you definitely should. Oh, yeah, okay. I see that you are. Yeah, I'm only 720 20. today. I yeah. think I just, I screwed up and didn't check that setting, guys. <laughs> They're asking. <laughs> They're like, why is this only 720? My fault. <laughs> and, and the preview looks really good. So like you don't even, yeah, like I guess the end platform is the only way to to know. Yeah, you can, you can select your full HD or you can do 720 or you can go lower if you're concerned about your internet connection uh, yeah. and the speed. But yeah, you, you basically, that's a little gear icon right there that will help you set this up. Uh, Richard says, if you restream to multiple live platforms, how do you handle mul handle multiple chats? This is the great thing about restream. I'll let you tell him. That's, 
Yeah, that's a great question. And there are different ways you could do that. Well, first of all, Restream always aggregates chats across different platforms and bring it all in one place. So all your LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, groups, pages, chats are all going to come together. And if you're using Studio, Luria was just earlier showing how you can actually overlay your whole chat on the screen and then all the comments, oh, here it is, and all the comments that are coming from different platforms will appear on that overlay with a little icon uh, like right here, you see Doc Rock says something from YouTube, right? And so different platforms will have their own little icons. You will know and this folks are coming from Facebook. This is LinkedIn message and this is YouTube. The most magical thing that I personally experienced when I was I'm hosting different events and shows uh, is when people start talking to each other because they're watching comments on the screen and then folks from Facebook start communicating with people from YouTube and the other way around. And it's just so beautiful to watch when people yeah. just like break those boundaries completely, no walls, no limits. And they like talk across different countries, different continents, different cultures, different platforms, mm -hmm. all in one um, interactive live video experience. So that, that's how we handle chat. On top of this variation that we have in studio, you can also have a standalone application for a chat, which can be desktop or web browser based. And that's good if you're using a different encoder, such as Ecamm yeah. or OBS. And in that case, you can just have that chat somewhere in a separate tab or overlay it as one of your sources on top of the stream um, if, if studio is not the space that you're uh, typically streaming in. So yeah. We have uh, a video aggregation. on exactly yeah. how to do that. Yeah. On the yeah. YouTube channel. Um, okay, next question uh, comes from Indy. Uh, can you correct any information while you're still live? I think meaning details of like title and description and things like that. Yeah, once you're live, you can, if you scheduled an event in advance, you're not you won't be able to change them. Um, you might be able to do that on end platforms. So if you have an assistant or co-producer, because presumably when you're live, you are already live and you're doing things, and you're talking about important uh, topics. But if you have someone else, you can go into your uh, end platform. You can correct it on like each end pl platform. Um, when it comes to instant streaming, that's actually a good question because I'm typically streaming with events. So I'm scheduling in advance and once it's scheduled, it's going to stay. So I'm going to change unless you go to the end platform. But if you're streaming instantly, I believe you do have the opportunity to, to change your title. Uh, another thing to remember is when you're scheduling your event, your thumbnail will likely not be changeable on certain platforms, especially LinkedIn is not going to allow you to change it even if you come back to the to the, plat to the end platform and try to change it there. You can change your description, but not the thumbnail. So my recommendation would be to be very uh, alert <laughs> and focused on that moment when you are scheduling the event and make sure you get it right. But if you're going live instantly, uh, changing, changing your title is an option. Okay. Um, the Palumi, I hope I'm saying your name right. Why do I have to create another event after my current one drops out? Uh, when you say drops out, like that's what I, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I think maybe, um, maybe you can clarify for us, but I think what they mean is like when, like, let's say it cuts, right. Or, um, mm -hmm. the stream uh, mm -hmm. buffers and, and cuts out and then having to wanting to reconnect to that event, essentially. Got you, got you. Yes, I see. So if you had a technical issue with connection or with something else, and for whatever reason, your event basically interrupted, we do have a little bit of a buffer period. I believe it's about three minutes. That's the time for you to either reconnect, refresh your thing, close everything that might be interrupting your stream, maybe charge your computer because sometimes I little, I've heard stories about people disconnecting and stopping their stream because their battery died. So you have this couple of minutes of grace period to fix whatever was broken and reconnect back to the same event. However, if this period is over three minutes, then Restream assumes that you're done and you just didn't finish it gracefully. You just basically you're not going to stream anymore and we close the event. And in that case, you won't be able to come back to that same event um, again and like continue that stream. In that case, you have two options. You can either create a new event or you can just go live instantly. Most likely it's going to pop up on those same platforms that you scheduled for event, right? And then uh, your community will be able to kind of like transition into that one. Unfortunately, with live streaming, tech, tech glitches happen. Yeah. So yeah, like when, if, and if that happens, just remember that you have a very small window to fix it if it's fixable. If not, it's just going to have to be a new, a new, new stream, new event. Yeah. And, and that, that time frame. do we know what 
exact time frame that is that you have to to connect back. It seems to me in all my testing that it's that it varies. I believe it's about three minutes, but I can definitely check for you guys and come back to you in comments because okay. uh, I, yeah, I think it's 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 something between two and three minutes. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll I'll get back to you okay. to give you like the exact yeah, that would be time, great time frame for that one. Yeah, it's not very long. It's not very long because we're what we're trying to avoid with that is if you actually did intend to end your stream, we don't want it to like drag along on right. your um, end channels with like black screen or whatever your last scene was when you're like that, you know, like trying to like yeah. turn the thing off and then you're just there on that screen for five <laughs> minutes with that happy face of yours. Uh, so I, I believe it's it's around that time frame, but I'll, I'll clarify and comment for you guys awesome. under this YouTube video. Uh, UK PI says, I used Restream to stream to YouTube and Twitch through OBS. Mm -hmm. Twitch didn't save the video. Why? That, that's probably on Twitch's side. Yeah, because Twitch, uh, especially if you're using it for the first time, uh, has a bunch of different settings. I actually had that yeah. similar situation when I first tried to stream, you won't believe it, some kind of gameplay. And I was really surprised that my YouTube video saved and my Twitch didn't. So you have to go in Twitch settings and select uh, the option to save uh, video on demand or VOD for the future. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it, that, that will save there. However, if you have your pro plan, or I believe even standard plan or higher, we do offer recordings with and restream. It doesn't matter if you stream through a studio or through OBS, you still have the recording of that video on restream. Yeah. So if you're on paid plan, you can actually access that and then upload it on Twitch. So you will have it for the future, even though there Twitch didn't save it for you. Yep. <laughs> restream <laughs> to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Get that video. <laughs> Get it back. I've seen a couple of comments about this, and I know you answered it back in March when you were on, but I'll let you answer it again. Um, does Restream work with Stream, uh, stream Deck? Yeah, so right now we don't uh, have that functionality, unfortunately, and that's a very common question. A lot of people want to to get that Stream Deck support for uh for the uh, for the streams, but currently, I would say the main issue is there are so many different things in Studio that we kind of like need to figure out how to program, especially with existing stream decks. We do have a couple of hotkeys, so if you use something like Command C, you will be able to turn on and off your camera. There is a Command S that will pop up your settings. That's a good opportunity to like remind yourself whether you're streaming 1080p, full HD, or are you in 720 zone. And then there is like a microphone. I, be, I believe Command M will mute your mic for you. So they're just like very basic ones. We are looking to add more hotkeys because there's are very easy ones for your layouts and possibly chat uh, display. So you can highlight your chat with a command on the keyboard. I think it's going to be very convenient because currently like all the scrolling and like clicking yeah. distracts you a little bit. Uh, but uh, the integration with existing stream decks such as Elgato stream, stream decks are kind of like still in in progress. It's a possibility. Do not have an ETA right now. So my okay. hotkeys are hopefully going to be coming sooner. But yeah, I mean, hotkeys allow you to, to do the things, right? Uh, some yeah. some of the things that you want to do, which is great. So if you already have one, then you can yeah. set that up. Jermaine says, do you know when is the best time to live stream? I have a rant all about this. Go for it, Anya. Yeah, and, then I'll, yeah. and then I'll pick up. <laughs> I would love to hear a rant about this. This is a very commonly asked question. And unfortunately, the answer, it, it depends. And in <laughs> my opinion, it really depends on your community and the type of content that you're streaming. So it's a combination of two. So I recommend to find out what is your sweet spot by testing different times, right? Like go live in the morning, go live in the afternoon, go live in the evening and see when you have the most engagement. Don't make assumptions based on just one live stream at each of those time slots. I would say run tests for about a month at different times, different weeks, different weekdays, and then kind of like see your analytics, which is going to help you to see like those peaks and like when the audience is around. Another way to find out is actually ask. You can always run a poll and be like, hey, folks, what is the best time for you to do a Q&A session with me? Or when is the best time for you to see my tutorials? A lot of times, of course, not everyone is going to answer, but a lot of times you will get a little bit of an idea like what people prefer. And another thing to consider is what kind of content are you offering. If it's business, marketing content, well, then business hours are probably better. If it's entertainment, something that people would generally prefer to watch after hours when they're having dinner or cooking, 
or even experiences at a podcast, but just like playing, playing your YouTube or Facebook while they're driving home, then of course those hours will be your kind of like sweet spot and optimal thing. So know your content, know your audience, experiment, trial and error, and then you will get very close to that best timing possible. But again, every stream is going to be different. And if you think you're <laughs> kicking ass in the mornings on Monday, sometimes you might have a bad Monday and maybe sometimes you'll have a good Friday. So like that's one of those things. Yeah. It's all very dynamic. Yeah. And I would add to that is very good advice. I would add to that. Um, it doesn't really matter what the right time is or what the experiments even show you because if you're not up for doing it, it doesn't matter, right? So when it comes to live, you have got to be on your best game. So I always start with when are you going to be best, right? To show up for your audience and to have the highest energy. If you're streaming at 8 p.m. after a long work day, after taking care of the kids and cooking and cleaning and all of that, and then you're trying to go live, yeah. for me, that would be a no-go. I would be dead, right? <sighs> Not that I have kids, but you know what I mean? Like after, like, you know, anytime But you still have after, cooking and cleaning, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you qualify. <laughs> and work. <laughs> and work. <laughs> but after oh, 2 p.m., true. I know my energy level, 2 p.m. and on, it's not there, right? And so I do my best work in the morning. So you got to know yourself so that you show up. Other, otherwise, and you're going to make excuses, right? If it's not a good time, you're going to make excuses. You're going to be tired. It's not going to work. They're too busy. So you'll cancel the stream and then you won't create that habit. You won't be able to grow your audience, et cetera, et cetera. So it always has to start with you. And that's not a selfish thing. That's a prioritization thing. And then you can move on to, you know, the other, the other questions and the experimentation. You might have a few different slots that you feel like would work. So experiment within yeah. those slots is, is what I always say. Um, Indy says, is it necessary to always get a new stream key? I guess for a new stream. So the you can use persistent streams, stream keys and on the different platforms, and then you don't have to change those. Correct. If you're using encoders, you can use the same key and you can we give you an option to refresh that key if you feel like you yeah. need to do that. So I would say there is no rule. There is no requirement. Um, it, it just kind of depends on what you're doing. Uh, sometimes if you've been using the same key for a long time, it might be a good idea to refresh it just in case to make sure nothing like cached or did something weird. Yeah. Or especially if you're experiencing some strange little glitchy things, uh, refreshing your stream key might be one of the recommendations that our support team will provide. But generally, you don't have to do it. You don't have to obtain a new one every time you go live. That's not necessary. All right. Next question comes from Kamal. Uh, let's see. If we use OBS as a virtual cam for restream to use multiple cams, and if the setting is 4K on OBS, will it automatically readjust to 1080 or 720 on restream? Yes. So if your camera, uh, whether it's virtual camera or a DSLR like the one I'm using right now, is set up for something that's more than full HD, um, 1080p, right? It is going to adjust because uh, live streaming platforms generally do not handle anything that's over full HD at the moment. So it will, yeah, it will downgrade it a little bit. So Extreme Hip Hop um, wants to know, do you pay extra when streaming to multiple platforms through Restream? It depends on the platform. So our pricing is based on uh, what you're trying to do. If you're trying to stream for your own individual purposes, your free plan is actually pretty good to go. So get a lot of things covered, such as your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook profile, your YouTube, your Twitch, your Twitter, within the individual space is all free. Once you start adding things like my page or groups or uh, LinkedIn pages, that's when you will be needing to progress to standard or professional plan. Standard plan gives you one professional page group or uh, customer team P and your pro plan is going to give you three. So that's on top of what you get for free already. And those additional extra destinations could be either pages or groups or just the second channel within the same platform. For example, your second YouTube or your second Twitter. 
So that's how the pricing is structured. So depending on where you're trying to go, like if you if you drop in the next comment, like what specific platforms you're trying to go to, and if it's Facebook, please specify if it's your profile, your page, or your group, uh, or multiple groups, uh, then I can let you know which is the easiest and the best plan for you. And it's also something that customer support team can help you out if you are kind of in doubt, you're like not sure if you should go with center or pro, for example, or pro or higher, you can always drop a line to them and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This are the destinations I'm trying to add. What is the best plan that I should I should go for? Um, Challenge ITV wants to know if you have any plans to add green screen function. Yeah, that's a, also another very commonly asked question. So within Restream Studio, we are actually thinking about that. So it is possible that we will add it. But already right now, you can use OBS virtual camera with green screen in order to to get that effect, right? Like if you're using OBS with Restream, you can have a green screen. If you're using Studio, you can still use um, OBS green screen and then use OBS virtual camera in Studio if you are trying to take advantage of all the cool things such as branding, cover, uh, overlay your chats and uh, add any kind of like graphics and captions and stuff like that. So currently it's a little bit of a workaround and it requires OBS. Likely OBS is free, so you can actually do that um, green screen with OBS and then pull yourself into studio with a virtual camera option. Yeah, what, just- what's your best on-camera tip? Oh, on-camera, like everything, including? <laughs> just, like how, how would you say, um, I don't know, what, what's the best lesson you've learned about showing up more confidently on camera, I guess? Yeah, that's a good one. I would say, well, there are two things. Uh, for me, I'm a planner and I like when things are tested and prepared. So I'm oh. similar to you in terms of like how, yeah, yeah I know, I know. Like you, <laughs> we, start, we start our stream 30 minutes before you actually go live because we want to check the check, we want to warm up, we want to chat, chat, chat oh, a little my, bit and like I get was, there. I was, I just, as a quick side note, um, my team was... <laughs> Greg from my team was making fun of me the other day because we were brainstorming a, a new course and I have all of these different color stickies, right? And the way I lay it out, he was like, okay, come on, girl. <laughs> like, that's so much of a planner I am. I have different color stickies to do different things, right? Like lay it out differently. And okay, yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah, but that's but that's exactly, I, in, in my opinion, that is your number one secret weapon. Like think about it in terms of, other things that you do in life. For example, if you're going to an important interview or important meeting, right? Like what is your best bet? Of course, prepare in advance, know what you're going to say, kind of like have that all planned out. Think about that. Zoom in, zoom out. Like what is this going to sound like? What is that going to sound like? And then eventually just be there early. Like if your meeting is at 9 a.m., like be there at 8 45, maybe 8.30 even, and just give yourself that space for anything to go wrong, anything screwing up on the way, and just kind of like to prepare and like not being rushed and stressed and just like being crazy when when the things are happening and you're almost almost late, right? Like that's that that feeling, I hate that feeling. I, I mean, I've been there a couple of times in my life and it's terrible. So just allow yourself a lot of time, a lot of room and prepare, just have this have this whole flow going. Um, yeah, that would be my my best kind of like advice or anything that I learned that I, I really value is just create that space. Give yourself a little time. I love that. And if you're not a planner, like somebody said <laughs> earlier, right? Somebody said, yeah. if I plan, Victor, if I plan, I'll never do. Um, and, and some people are the exact opposite. So like you've got to understand how it is you work best, right? To for yeah. that preparation or that lack of preparation. <laughs> yeah, some people are spontaneous, and that's their best thing. Like they exactly. are at best. If you make them think about something for a long time and plan it out, they're like, "I'm lost. I'm, I'm not even interested in this anymore." Like I don't yeah. like that. <laughs> it's so funny to me. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I like I looked at this for so long. Like this is this is not interesting anymore. I'm like, ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Like, like, yeah. like, it's just it's, getting interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Lean <laughs> into your strengths. Absolutely. Um, yes. Coming back to Restream, Indy has brought this up a couple of times because you mentioned it in passing. Descript now plus Restream. How did that happen? It's a game changer. Mm-hmm. Indy wants more information. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's a good one. So Descript uh, and Restream are, are friends now. We're very excited because we. <laughs> 
definitely believe that this is the best tool out there on the market for editing your video if you're not a professional video editor. Like this is as good as it gets. And their promise is that you are going to experience editing your video as easy as you would edit a Word document, right? And that is just it's such a great analogy right there. So with Descript, uh, what we have currently, we have two different phases of integration. Uh, we are pass number one, which allows you to go to your Descript, basically edit your video to perfection, add those captions, do the overdubs, remove all this ums and ahs that you potentially, maybe, maybe you don't do that, but maybe have in your video. And then that picture perfect video can be uploaded, basically exported directly from Descript into Restream. And then it ends up in your video storage and you can schedule it to go live or just keep it there. So our next level of integration that's coming in full will allow people to export the recordings of the live stream is just like this one once we're done directly into Descript. So that will create that round trip that once you're going live, you are, um, once you're done with your live stream, you take your recording, send it with one click to Descript, change it, edit it for repurposing, and then potentially even download it right back to Restream and then push it to go live at an alternative time. So that's what we're trying to build currently. You already can simply download your recording and then put it in Descript, but we're going to make it easier in, in just a couple of months. But right now, just export from Descript and use Restream Scheduler, which is the opportunity to schedule pre-record videos to go live on social platforms, multiple platforms at the same time, which is another feature that I personally love a lot. This is really this is really helpful. Picture yeah. perfect, p- picture perfect streams is um, it's pretty powerful. It's another way to be confident on camera, right? Take right? a bunch of cake. <laughs> And then go live. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Here's a tip from Renee. If you're streaming with other people, be generous and hand off the mic as often as you can. Conversations are so much better than sequential monologuing. Oh, yeah. Who hate, like, I hate monologues. I I, I don't like this, like, oh, this is going to be a lecture. So, like, we're going to, like, turn you off, turn all of you in the chat off. It's me time. I'm going to teach you a thing. Like, no. (laughs) Nobody needs that. That's that's not the live stream way, in my opinion. Live stream, the most powerful part is it's interactive. It's interactive between the co-host or hosting guest and between the audience that is included in the conversation. So, yeah, definitely take advantage of that. Renee um, said, if you take over any channel on YouTube with a stream for one show, which channel would it be and what would the stream be about? Oh, if you could take over. Wow. Okay. If you could take over any channel on YouTube and stream for one show, which channel would it be and what would you stream about? Oh, wow. That is that is a good question. Ooh. Like, that's a, like, Wow. I'm just trying to like think about all the YouTube channels I that know, I know right? of. And of course, like my my instinct is to go big. Like, I don't know, take over Tesla's YouTube channel and be like, <laughs> hey, Are you, you a Tesla people. Fan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of, yeah, I, I dig. I dig that whole electric okay. car thing. And yeah, or maybe like SpaceX, like all that Elon Musk stuff. Maybe Elon Musk channel. Does he have a YouTube channel? If he doesn't, we definitely think, need to, I don't know. to teach him to teach him how to how to go live and to basically yeah take over the channel and be like, hey guys, look what you can do if you did it live. Like that would be my my message. Like don't there just do pre recorded. Don't upload your videos on demand, but just you know make it just interactive. Do it <laughs> Let's do it live. Exactly. <laughs> All right, a couple more questions. The Your Agile Lady, which Sony camera would you suggest to have? And if you have to pick a Logitech camera, which one would you suggest for live streaming? I know I have my suggestions. Do you have uh, ones? I have a Canon camera. So like this, like, which <laughs> Sony camera is like a, it's a little tricky camera? Which Sony camera? Which <laughs> Apple computer would you like to suggest for live streaming? Like, oh, okay, that, that there is it down. So I'm using Canon DSLR. I do believe that DSLRs uh, significantly elevate the quality of your videos. And I know you're using one as well. So I definitely, once you're at that stage of live streaming, when, when quality really matters, I would highly recommend DSLR. I'm using Canon, uh, that uh, AOS T8i. So it's a pretty small camera, but kind of okay. good quality. And in terms of Logitech, so I used Logitech Brio when I first started. That was back in the days when I didn't have lights. The window was my light. Luckily in Austin, Texas, it's 
almost always sunny, so I didn't have to worry about not having my lights. Right. But it was always that moment, like, please don't be cloudy, please don't rain. I have I have to go live tomorrow. And the Logitech Brio was my was my uh, jam. So I I thought it was a pretty good one for for as tiny as it is, 4K camera, right? Like that doesn't doesn't get better than that. So it does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Let's With see. The new- Face cam. So oh. I I have a comparison coming up soon, and um, I love the face cam, the picture awesome. better than the Logitech. Um, yeah. And so this is my now go to um, recommendation. Awesome. Um, so I'm still testing it and stuff like that, but it's yeah. this is this is a good one. So it's from Elgato, yeah. just released uh, last week. So Beautiful. last week. Yeah, last week. Um, and then as, as far as Sony's, I use the Sony A6100. Uh, and any of the A series for the Sony's are fantastic, um, depending on what you can get your hands on. If you're going to, you know, you really don't need the functionality if you're doing a studio streaming setup uh, for the A6400. So you can save yourself a little bit of money. <laughs> I'm glad you brought this up, Gregarious. What are some good use cases for streaming a previous recording? This is something that I'm super, oops, sorry. Um, I, I'm super passionate about like being cautious about recording and uploading and acting as if it's live just because it can break trust. Um, and you know, you, we've had this conversation before. So I don't, I would never, ever, 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 ever suggest that you guys record something and act as if it's live and pretend that. But I know Anya, you have some use cases that you like to share in terms of when that would be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm with you on the fact that you do not want to use pre-recorded scheduled videos and pretend that they are live, like just completely make it look like it's it's actually going live. So yeah. it is always a good idea to make it clear that this is a replay or this is a pre-recorded. So there are a couple of use cases that I personally find very uh, helpful, kind of depends on your industry and like what you do. So for educators, a good use case is if you have a masterclass or some kind of workshop on your topic that you're really proud of. And it's it was good. It was great. There were great questions. You were at your best and you were able to show and kind of like unpack a lot of great things about uh, the product or service that you are, uh, you're teaching about. So repurposing that content and scheduling it live again and then jumping in the questions and basically being there for your audience and responding in the chats is a good idea because then you don't have to be worried and nervous about that video and you know not messing things up not forgetting something important you already have a beautiful workshop ready and you can take advantage of showing up as a live video on end platforms but i still like i said i would recommend saying hey this is a replay and i'm going to be in the chat to react and to comment um and answer questions that are coming in Another uh, very common use case is, of course, music. If you're streaming music, you might as well record it and then push it live. Uh, A lot of uh, DJs, radio stations do that. So that's a very common use case. And, of course, replays for a different time zone. That's, again, I guess kind of like my personal thing that I understand because Restream team is very international. We have people everywhere in the world. And it makes sense that sometimes I go live and I know that folks in our Ukrainian office, for example, cannot make it and they will not be able to watch my stream that happens like at 5 p.m. my time in Austin. So rescheduling the stream, an interview or something really meaningful for an alternative time zone is another use case. But again, I would recommend saying this is a replay. This is a replay of this stream that happened earlier, but in case you didn't have a, ch- a chance to catch it, like here is here here it is for you, and it's yeah. just gonna like pop up in their feeds versus like hey find it, scroll down, find that video on demand. Um, so that's kind of like how I see the the scheduler benefits. Awesome, and yeah, you know if, as long as you're mixing things with live, like you don't want to train your audience that you're never actually live over time. Right. Um, so definitely if you do any of those use cases, mix it with real lives, that way you're not, you're not ruining your chances of them actually showing up. Um, one, one more question, any plans for browser source support for, uh, for alerts? That <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Browser source support for alerts. Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, we definitely uh, we, we get that quite a bit, and uh, that's something that we are 
we're technically capable to do. It's okay. just the, the the question of like how to do it right and like what kind of alerts we want to bring in. Maybe like some standard ones, like the most commonly used would be first in line. So it's definitely somewhere in the roadmap, somewhere uh, in our plans. And yeah. yeah, I definitely see a lot of value in that. So something also to pass along to our product team that, hey, this is a reminder, people are asking. They're still, yeah. they're still interested. So yeah, good question. <laughs> good point. Um, you guys, I know I didn't get to all of the questions and I apologize, uh, but uh, we have a playlist here um, uh, and lots of videos about Restream. So if you want to dive deeper into some of those videos, check that link out. And also, if you want to try for yourself and you haven't signed up yet, get, definitely go get your $10 credit at livestreamingpros.com slash Restream. <laughs> <laughs> Anya, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and you know, being your awesome self and sharing all the details and the new features. If you guys missed the new features, you have to go back and watch the beginning of this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm super, super excited. Thank you so much for having me. Great questions. Great community. So many amazing, positive vibes. I, I wish you all happy Friday, guys. And yeah, see you around. <laughs> happy, happy restreaming. <laughs>